Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back, of course, to the uh, Time Bomb channel in uh, 2023. Happy 2023, Happy New Year to everyone. Um, hope everyone is good. Um, January is one of those reflective months, I think, where um, most of us are broke. We've spent too much money over the festive period. We've probably eaten too much over the festive period and put on a few extra kilos. You may have even gotten the uh, 15th, 16th strain of COVID. I apologize if that's the case for you. You might wake up in January as well with your brain capacity feeling on par with hey hey. And worse still, Santa clearly didn't read all of those letters that you bothered writing to him asking you for that Seiko limited edition. Mm, or was it because you asked for a smartwatch, which is the reason why he chose to ignore you? If you do buy a watch in January, the wife is probably going to be on your case a little bit like a honey badger. Um, and then the dog is either going to love you or hate you uh, for moving in. I think um, was it <laughs> Nick Cave uh, wrote the perfect song, which kind of sums up that January feeling. But anyway, so the January blues have still got you itching for a, for a new watch. Um, Casio um, have uh, agreed uh, to offer some some respite. I've spent my uh, YouTube uh, advertising income on a few of their entry level digis uh, to show you here today. I think these might be kind of a way to scratch that watchy, itchy patch that's developing. Um, maybe some resiny poultice uh, applied is the way to fix these issues. Anyway, let's shut up, flip the camera and uh, check them out. All right, so we've got then for comparison, we have the AE1300WH, one AVEF, referred to today as the 1300. Um, we've then got the W800H 1A uh, uh, VES referred today as the uh, 800 and lastly and also thirdly we've got the pop the focus there the W86 1VQES uh, referred today as the 86 or the humble F91 referred today as the F91 let's just zoom in a little bit Let's just whip these babies out of the packaging. Apologies for the, uh, the rustling. So that's number one, number two. And number three over here. Far too much packaging, not enough space on the table. Here's the plastics. And again. So that's a little moment of silence while we remove that sexy piece. Wonderful sound effects that, uh, that come with that moment. <laughs> as I say, so this one then referred to today as the 1300, the AE 1300. Um, yeah, I had, um, I think I had one of these ones. The, it was the AE, um, is it the 1200 in steel? Um, well, it wasn't really, was it? Because I fell for the hype around those things when they came out. There were bag loads of videos and I watched them and I went, ooh, got to get one of those. It kind of reminds me of my youth. And then I hated the tin foil covering on it. So I sold it, I think, within a couple of weeks. Really disliked it. Um, I find that these uh, 1300s are a little bit more genuine in that they're resin all the way through and they're also cheaper. Uh, the biggest downside I think to these ones is is that obviously they call this one the countdown timer and those three eyes up the top have little function other than you know that countdown timer so it's a little bit that that redundancy that you find then also on the uh, the G-Shock uh, three eyes which other one we got next uh, next one we've got is the another spicy moment Ooh, that one sounded very good very wholesome. Um, the uh, the 800, I think, is certainly isn't going to win any uh, beauty prizes. Is really quite blocky um, in appearance and lumpy. It's quite deep, actually, if you consider sort of the module size in there. Maybe they've just sort of squidged it up to to, to make that dial, um, you know, fully squared. Um, it's an odd it's an odd design if you think in comparison to some of the others, which are quite sort of a little bit more standard. Then our, our, our 86 here, W86, I think, which is very, very closely uh, related, I think, to the F91, in that the sense it, it's just the uh, the three button operations, 
Um, I imagine, yeah, there's not much modular difference in these either. This one is substantially, substantially larger though. I did a fuller review of the F91, the, uh, the Terra wristwatch, and I'll pop a link um, up there somewhere um, if you're interested in checking that one out. Let me just pause there, I wanna gather my... Yeah, so I'd written some notes, so I wanted to do a comparison on these three, but then I thought, nah, really, this type of video doesn't, doesn't need a huge amount of uh, heavy data, does it? <laughs> we, we, we're looking at all watches that cost, um, you know, far less than a, than a couple of pints of beer in a, in a, in a pub in London. So really, um, yeah, we don't need bags and bags of data on these things. I think, yeah, key, key factors, as you can see on the, uh, the right-hand side here, the, uh, oddly, the uh, 86 has the shortest strap, shorter even, oh no, it's not shorter. Um, so no, correction, the 91 has the shortest strap, uh, then, then the, uh, the 86, and closely followed by the, uh, the 800, with the 1300 then having at the back there the longest strap out of all of them. Important reference because um, one of the reasons why I don't wear my 91 too much is because, let me throw it on wrist and show you, my wrist uh, for reference is, uh, the, is seven and a quarter inch. And yeah, it's, it's okay, I'm not, I'm not on the last one. I know that some people do wear their watches on that last hole. I can't, I find it so uncomfortable. But the issue that I've got, for example, is then it displaces the whole buckle and the keeper off to that right hand side. And I prefer mine off to that right hand side. I prefer it in the center. It just feels a lot more comfortable. And then I catch it on less uh, or fewer objects, excuse me. Um, compare that, com compare and contrast uh, with our 86 on wrist. It gives a, it's a fraction better. Um, it sits ideally on wrist. I mean, these things are so light. Um, and then, but as you can see here, that that keeper is right around the edge near the uh, the wrist bone there, and I, I don't like keepers and things hanging around there. I just just find it a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, again, purely personal personal preference. I reference the 800, as I say, not winning any beauty prizes. It's really not um, it's not an attractive looking watch <laughs> at all, uh, but incredibly utilitarian, very functional, and that strappage. Um, here I find it's a little bit better because then the uh, keeper sits on the on the. I'm looking at the wrong side. The keeper sits on the reverse side here, reverse side, um, and that works well. So yeah, props a little bit more for for your, your, your teenage kid um, who's going to wear that with a plum. Um, and then lastly, the 1300 going on wrist here, and this one with that longer strap I just find is ideal. Um, let me just throw it through the keeper here. Yeah, that for me is, is, is exactly where I'd like to wear my uh, buckle and keeper. And as I say, it looks pretty cool. Very, very retro. Um, probably out of the three, the most attractive um, of the uh, designs and the layouts. And I think, as I say, on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, I find that that one fits the best out of all three of them. Only other aspects to notice on the um, on the strappage is that I think out of all of these, um, the 800 is probably going to be the sweatiest um, because it has neither venting nor fluting anywhere. You've got some little shoulders there which might um, which might pull a little bit of uh, air through. Um, but at least um, the 86, whilst being shorter, you know, has some good venting there, which either water or uh, sweat or air, air and things is gonna come out. This one then featuring the, uh, the fluting, they don't stretch too much them. They're there more for design purposes than to actually fit over a dive, to a dive suit. It's just simply the wrong type of rubbery resin. Um, so yeah, again, aspects there to note. The 86, however, despite its shortcomings on the on the um, on the, uh, the on that on that shorter strap, um, it does have the best backlight. Uh, that blue, sorry, I'm pressing the wrong one. I can't see through the other side of the camera. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting all the uh, hang tags tied up in each other. And so, yeah, that blue, I'll throw up some, some dark shots of it. The blue dial on, the blue uh, backlight on this one, I think is the best. It just mirrors those blue, the blue go faster stripes across the top there um, perfectly. So it works really, really well. 
the others are all fit for purpose but as I say I think uh, the winner of all of them is definitely going to be the 86 on the lighting um, one other downside God, I'm picking up a lot of these is that the um, the 86 doesn't the module doesn't have the option for the 24-hour dial so you've only basically got the uh, PM indicator there even the 91 has that 24-hour um, dial option um, timing option and I personally I, I prefer it all of my watches my digis I, ha I have on that it's just something I've grown up with it's something that I want on my watches um, January as well usually involves more clothes than say June or July <laughs> I prefer those slimmer watches um, in July in, in January simply because then they don't snag up your sleeves so let's leave big chunkers like the GWG 1000 etc for the summer so all four of these are going to sit comfortably under your uh, heavy winter coats without causing too much of an issue other aspects to notice I think as well the buttonage um, on the uh, the 1300 here is uh, the best bigger they all stick out they're all balanced um, not like on some of the other G-Shocks where you've got depressed buttons and things like that they're all super accessible work very well indeed um, that's then mirrored here on the 800 again if really easy to operate buttons um, the 86 then you can see that they shrink down quite a lot but the worst of all is then on the 91s because I mean yeah these are super small buttons however as you can see there they stick out really quite a long way so again absolutely no issues at all on uh, you know accessing your functions and, and things like this I think pretty much that's that's a wrap as I say I don't really want to go into massive amounts of detail on the module that's not what this uh, review is about it's just simply to offer you then four good wholesome digital plasticity plasticity even you know that's going to be robust dependable cheap and cheerful yeah there's a plethora of other digis out there that you can pick up for less than 25 bucks so these are just a few to tickle your imagination should that little itchy spot here needs some of that resiny poultice um, applied which one gets your vote guys uh, let us know your thoughts down below or alternatively have i left out uh, your favorite one drop us a comment please uh, very much look forward to hearing about it and as always thanks for your time and for your view hope january goes well and until the next vid this is your host the bombardier signing off cheers guys mm -hmm.